Okay, friends, I guess today is the day for a very much overdue update. In truth, I've tried to do this many times over the past few months, and I just didn't feel ready, and I still don't feel ready, but I might not ever be ready, and sometimes you just have to do it. So here it goes. This is a little update as to why I haven't been on social media or putting out public content since before Memorial Day, if you're interested. First off, I'm okay. Thank you for those of you who've reached out to see if I'm okay. I'm okay. Maybe I'm more okay than I've ever been. God is working in my life and I've been stretched beyond belief. I've been suffering um, for many years, honestly. First thing I wanna say is I am not alone in suffering. I know many of you listening right now are suffering. We are in very hard times in our lifetime, unprecedented times. I've never known until I would say the past few years what it felt like and feels like to be overwhelmed, lonely, um, just it, it, under a spiritual persecution that's very heavy and on one hand, I, I don't like it, it's hard, but I think I know, I have an idea of what God is doing. He's preparing us and he's been preparing us. And sometimes God allows us to suffer for, I mean, always for good reason. Every disciple and follower of Jesus or God in the Old Testament suffered and many died for putting their trust in Jesus. And so it's just been a reminder that for many of us, we became very comfortable with this world. And I shared that in recent, you know, posts and podcasts that God has changed me so much since 2020. I mean, I'm, it, we're all evolving and as Christians, we're going through a sanctification process, but I've been most stretched and changed over these past few years. And I see, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe I'm more like Jesus today than I was before. And the reason I believe that is because my love for people has become more intense and my concern for their salvation. See, this life is temporal. We are here for just a little while compared to our eternity. And God, you know, the Bible says he stands at the door and knocks. He doesn't force his way into our hearts, but he's there waiting for us to, A, acknowledge that we are in need of a savior, that we are sinners, that we don't have what it takes. And we cannot in our human fleshly body and ability ever be right with God. And we need redemption. And to put our trust in Jesus and to call on him as our savior. He's waiting for us all to do that. And he wants every one of us, it doesn't matter what age, color, gender, political affiliation you have. He loves us the same and wants all of us to come into his kingdom and have eternal life. You know, I have been a Christian since I was a little girl and it's only been over the past few years that I've acknowledged my reliance on the world and just how saturated I was in relying on, you know, putting my trust in people who have ended up a lot failing me. I've been hurt and disappointed by a lot of people. I know many of you too, you know, we're dealing with a lot of um, adversity or just, you know, families breaking apart or just having friends completely you know, abandon you, whatever. I, I've been there. I get it. We can't put our trust in people. Some of us are putting our trust in material things or that next party, or even, you know, trying to get lost in fantasy world by reading books and television and so forth. I had no idea how saturated I was in this world. And even to this day, I realize like when I'm upset, 
I'll reach for food. I'll, I used to pour myself a glass of wine. Like I was always turning to something. And I think God is really preparing us because ultimately he wants to be our everything. No matter where we're at or how low we are, and he will allow us, and as we've seen what's been happening in our country and just feeling out of control and seeing it go in a very different direction, he is allowing us to be uncomfortable. And many of us have been suffering. And it's, I hate to admit this, a good thing because he is you know, bringing us to a point where we re realize we're at the end of ourselves and all we can do is reach out for him and then he will be there. He is there with us in it to carry us and see us through it. That's what he's been doing in my life. God's been allowing me to struggle specifically. I'm going to get a little personal here in the area of my health. I've really been struggling with my health. You guys know that I've shared that before. Um, not being able to get control over, you know, some health symptoms that I've been dealing with since I was 16 years old. And it very well may be the thorn in my side. I don't know. You know, I, I like to think that I am doing all I can to get as well as possible, but it's been a struggle. I've also been dealing with loneliness like never before as a mommy. I'm an older mom. You know, my parents are at the end of their life. Um, just not able to really be in it with me. And it's been extremely lonely and hard. I'm scared raising a kid in this world. I realized that I wanna do my best to protect my son from things that will distort his mind. And in reflecting on all of this, I realized that my involvement with social media, especially over these past few years, while a lot of good has come out of it, I have no regrets over exposing a lot of hypocrisy, making people laugh. I mean, I, I stand by everything I've said and shared because I know God knows the true objective. Um, but I'm so turned off with it lately. I'm, I'm really turned off with it because I notice every time I would get on, my attitude would change. I would get stressed. I would see things going on that would make me angry and agitated. And I knew like this can't be good. And so by getting off, I realize it. it's not until sometimes you create distance from something that you realize if something is maybe just not good for you. The social media climate is very toxic right now. And it's kind of like removing yourself from, you know, you're at a party and things get really heated and everybody's fighting. The first thing I would think to do if you can't obviously help resolve the conflict is to remove yourself. And so that's what I've been doing. And God has allowed me to see that politics today has become an idol for a lot of people and a, and a much bigger distraction than really what it should be. You see, I don't want to give any more bandwidth of my precious time and energy. You guys know I'm a, I'm a wife, I'm a mom. I take my job as a Proverbs 31 woman very seriously. I don't wanna give any more bandwidth to politics because it's more invasive during this time period than it ever has been. I mean, never before in my history growing up have I spent so much time thinking about politics. I will continue to support those who are using their platforms to share the truth that is in the Bible and expose the hypocrisy and the wickedness, because I do believe that we're all called to do that. We just don't all need to do it in a capacity where, for me personally, you know, becoming a public figure, dealing with a lot of, you know, just being slammed. We don't have our free speech the way we once did. There's a lot of repercussions I don't want to get into, but it can be, it's, it's a battlefield. It really is. And because I'm a mom, because I'm a woman, because I have to protect, you know, I'm first a mom. I have to really be careful because of the climate, like I said, but I continue to support those who are doing it. You know, most people that do it, by the way, have like an organization behind them. I had prayed and waited to work with other people because I don't recommend anyone being a Christian conservative content creator in today's climate without having 
as even Jesus had 12 disciples around him because his message was extremely controversial. If Jesus needed 12 physical, hands-on brothers around him, praying for him, supporting him, then so do we. And I didn't have that. I can go on and on. There's a lot of other reasons. And uh, in truth, I'm not saying that I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't. I take it one day at a time. Jesus can come back tomorrow for all we know. I'm just taking it one day at a time. And as of right now, I'm not putting out content. And I have a peace in knowing I'm exactly where God wants me at this time. He wants me to be the best Christian I can be, the best mom I can be, the best wife I can be. I am a homemaker. And I, by the way, am loving just experiencing people in real time and loving people. And, you know, I think we need to do more of that. I think we need to get off of social media and turn the media off for a while, unless you have no idea who you're voting for at this point. But if you know, like, and you know what's going on, that's it. You have, you have a job to do, right? Get out there, start loving people, start being Jesus in a world that needs it because together we can change the climate. That's what we need. It, you know what I'm saying? Like we don't need more contentious Facebook posts or anything like that. I'm not saying I never do it by the way, because I still share some things, but politics, the media, social media, all of it can, whether you're on the giving or the receiving side, can literally suck you in and spit you out to dry. And you can wake up one day and just regret wasting so much time and energy. And I think that's sometimes what the devil wants from us. He would love for us to waste our time. He doesn't want us to shine our light. He doesn't want us to really make an impact. And it's not, it's so much deeper than politics. It really is. It's about being Jesus and, and sharing the kingdom of God. That's what I want to do. And I'm doing it in real time. I really hope you can do that too. Don't be worried about what is happening in November. Cast your vote. Put the rest in God's hands. He might allow this country to fall. But it's most important that you know where you're spending your eternity. And uh, try to get your loved ones to come along with you. So there's the update. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I really don't. I'm taking it one day at a time. I ask God each morning to help me align my plans with his will. And so that's how I'm going to sign off here. So God bless you. God bless America. And uh, I love you guys.